Hey there, everyone. I was recently reading an article from Wired.com. I came across this article that talked about why all preppers are going to die regardless of what they do. Uh, I'm not going to link to the article. It's a pretty stupid article, actually. Uh, but it got me thinking about why people think all preppers are crazy or off their rockers. Uh, so I came up with a list of 10 different things that I think these, these misconceptions that make people think uh, that preppers are off their rockers. Uh, so I'm just going to go through those real quick here. Uh, number one that I've got here, why preppers aren't as crazy as people think, is preppers will be less affected when anything happens, uh, big or small. Uh, while nothing is guaranteed, preppers are less dependent on others, and we're also more confident about how to react in a disaster. Uh, even smaller disasters like car accidents, preppers are going to have a leg up on someone who is completely unprepared about how to handle that situation. Uh, most preppers don't just focus on the apocalypse like people think. Uh, we prepare for natural disasters, civil unrest, active shooters, pers personal doomsdays, uh, and those are just as important, if not even more because of their likelihood, than the you know preparing for a nuclear war. Uh, number two I have here is we don't hate the government. This is a big misconception. We don't hate the government. We hate big government. Uh, this misconception is based around the idea that all preppers are extremists, right? Uh, but it couldn't be further from the truth. Most preppers understand that without government, there would be complete anarchy. The problem that we have with government is the corruption, is the greed, is the sacrifice of our civil liberties. Uh, our national debt, for example, it's a byproduct of elected officials that care more about getting reelected than actually solving problems. Uh, government in general is about creating problems, and then they try to solve those problems they created in the first place. In this country, people are more than happy to sacrifice their civil liberties for that perceived security. And, you know, the government is more than willing to come in and lend a hand, as long as they get reelected, of course. Uh, number three here, people have this misconception that preppers are hoarders. Uh, prepping is not hoarding. People think that a prepper's home's got to be stuffed wall to wall with stuff, and there's only a, you know, a path right down the middle that leads to this giant wall-sized gun safe with a hundred different guns and thousands of rounds of ammunition. Uh, while that wouldn't be all that bad, uh, the truth is a good preparedness plan includes inventory, rotation, organization. Uh, preppers need these useful supplies, and they need food that's not expired. Uh, all, a, all a hoarder really needs is just a place to put all this junk. Uh, number four, another reason why people think preppers are crazy is they think we all want something bad to happen. Something, you know, they, we all want Armageddon. Um, you've probably heard this a hundred times, but prepping is like having life insurance or auto insurance or insurance in general. We, we don't want to get in a car accident, but we're sure going to be glad we have that insurance when it does. And car accidents happen all the time. If disaster does strike, we'll be glad we have these preparedness supplies and these preparedness skills, just like the insurance. Now, I'm sure there's people out there just waiting for the bombs to drop, right? They, they are looking forward, I suppose, to this type of stuff. But the truth is, the vast majority of preppers aren't like this. Uh, we try to live more self-reliant, we try to live responsibly, and we're preparing uh, for a whole number of different scenarios. Uh, I would be perfectly happy if I died without ever having to live through some sort of disaster situation and just pass these preparedness, this preparedness knowledge on to my kids. Uh, number five here, we're all gun nuts. And this is, you know, somewhat true. Uh, while some of us are, uh, we're not the problem when it comes to guns in society these days. I've learned more about firearms and firearm safety from the preparedness community than anywhere else in my entire life. Uh, the, the preparedness community is filled with responsible gun owners like hunters, military members, sport shooters, historians that you know think about tyranny and stuff like that. Most preppers believe that there's a deeper issue that needs to be addressed with gun violence rather than gun confiscation and banning all guns. Uh, number six here, we're not all doomsday preppers. This is a big one out there. When you ask the average person what a prepper is, that's automatically where their brains go, to that doomsday prepping. In reality, most of us couldn't and probably wouldn't be like these people on those shows. Uh, most of us are too boring to be on shows like these, and 
we're really no different than anyone else in the neighborhood. And also, most of us can't afford some of the toys that they have, even though we, we kind of want them. We can't afford the toys that these people have on the shows. You know, the bug out vehicles, the big battery bank in the garage that can power up the whole house. Cool to have, but in reality, not feasible for most of us. Uh, number seven here, we're all isolated and reclusive. Uh, because people in the preparedness community talk about, you know, being the gray man. We talk about operational security and situational awareness. We talk about that stuff so much. People tend to think we're isolated and we don't, we don't like other people. We don't want to be around other people. Uh, while this may be true in a large scale type disaster situation, it, it's, it, it's not true in the smaller type situations, the natural disasters and stuff like that. Uh, in fact, in a small scale disaster, you know, our neighbors are probably going to be happy they have a prepper around when something like that does happen uh, because we have, you know, a little bit of knowledge about all of this different stuff and we're more likely basically to, uh, to react to that situation. Number eight here is also a big one. We're all conspiracy theorists. And while this is somewhat true, it doesn't mean that we believe every conspiracy theory out there. Uh, the reason I think we get labeled conspiracy theorists is because we, we tend to question everything and we don't take what the mainstream media says as gospel. Uh, also, people like Alex Jones and these fear-based marketing things, you've seen them where buy this or you're going to die, they've kind of fueled that crazy prepper mentality. Uh, people think that we hang on every word that Alex Jones says or these guys say, uh, but in, in actuality, we're smart enough to make our own decisions. Uh, a lot of this stuff is, you know, just entertainment. Uh, number nine here, we can and will be more helpful than most people think. Preppers don't just stockpile food and water and supplies, stuff like that. We learn some of these life-saving skills that are important as well. You know, first aid, trauma medicine, wilderness skills, communications, safety classes like CERT and the Red Cross. Uh, because we have this knowledge and we try to learn about this stuff, uh, we're going to be more likely to lend a hand when something does happen, whether that's something small like a, like a car accident or even a natural disaster. We're going to be ready to respond to something like that uh, the more we learn these skills. We're going to be more prepared than, than, say, the average person for situations like this. And then number 10 here, which is probably the biggest one of all, uh, preppers are overreacting. People, this is probably the biggest reason people think preppers are crazy because they think we're overreacting and we're paranoid. Uh, while there is an aspect of paranoia associated with preparedness, it's no worse than being paranoid when, say, you're driving and somebody's driving in your blind spot or you're watching somebody drive erratically and you're worried they're going to, you know, cross over into your lane. Uh, that's paranoia as well. Uh, with preppers, we choose to be proactive about situations rather than reactive, which is the way society seems to be these days and, you know, throughout history, actually. Uh, life has been so good for so long in the United States that people don't even know that all these, the World War II is just something that happened in the history books. The Iraq War was something we watched on TV. Nothing affects people's daily lives, so they react to things. Uh, the electrical power grid is something that we should be working on hardening, but until something happens with it, nothing's going to get done because people are reactionary. You know, as preppers, like I said, we choose to be proactive, and history has shown us over and over again that bad things do happen. Uh, and regardless of how quote unquote evolved we are as human beings, uh, we're still human beings. Uh, and history always repeats itself. Uh, so in closing, if you've got any thoughts on this or any other ideas that I didn't mention in here, leave a comment below. Uh, but, you know, just remember, you can't please everyone. Uh, people are going to think what they think and what they think shouldn't affect how you go about your daily life. Uh, there's always going to be somebody that hates what you do or thinks you're stupid for doing what you do. And this goes for every aspect of life, not just prepping. But prepping is more about living responsibly and, and living more self-sufficient and being ready when life rears it, its ugly head and not necessarily always about doomsday. So uh, to me, prepping isn't crazy. I think prepping is the responsible thing to do. So that's it for this video. Uh, we also did an hour-long podcast on this. Talk, we went into more depth about these 10 things, and I've got an article over at survivalsprepper.net. I'll link to that below. Uh, but if you have any comments or anything you want to add to that, uh, make sure and just go to the comment section below and add that there. 
Uh, also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure and hit the subscribe button. Uh, but until next time, we will talk to everyone later.